You know, I'll make a prediction that for the next 20 years, that the majority of our, our increase in business effectiveness, productivity, and profitability will come not from the continued exploitation of technology. And I'm not anti-technology at all, but rather from the hearts and minds of our workforce. When asked to speak, I was told that you wanted to hear about some of the companies that we've worked with and, and studied over the years and how they've used their relationship with employees as a competitive weapon and brought a lot more money to the bottom line. If I can do that and show you how you can replicate those same results, would you be interested in hearing about it? I hope so, because if not, I have no idea what we're going to do for the next little while. Despite all the stuff that's gone on over the last 12, 15 years, good news. Nobody has moved the cheese, okay? <laughs> People still come to work pretty much looking for the same basic stuff. Let's talk about that a little bit. There's six things that all of us want at work. I mean, the first is meaningful work, and we, we want the, the freedom to pursue it. We want to be in the game, not on the bench. We want the opportunity to do our best work, and we'd like to see a little progress when we go home at the end of each day, don't we? If you look at what's happened with, with employee tenure, average job tenure, over the last 60 years, it's been massive change. I mean, back in the 50s where the average person you know, stayed at a job for just shy of 20 years. Today, it's between, somewhere between four and five, although it's actually popped up a little bit in the last two years. It's like anymore, you, you go through a, I, don't know, I guess you shouldn't do this, but you go through a, a fast food restaurant drive, drive through and between the time you place your order and you get to the, to the pickup window, the person who took your order has initiated a job change. <laughs> and it's like my son said, he said, Dad, you gotta understand, we don't marry our jobs anymore. We're just dating them. And it's not even exclusively. <laughs> Another great management scholar, Bon Jovi, says, look, heart trumps brains, usually. A few years ago, I was doing a seminar for Marriott, not at a Marriott, it's for Pfizer. Just like I do every time, like I did this morning, went down to the, to the meeting room about an hour and a half ahead of time to check it out. I walk in the room, it's not right. We had a very sophisticated, complex AV setup. It wasn't right. It was my fault, not anybody else's. So here I'm in blue jeans, grubby t-shirt. I'm looking around for, for a Marriott banquet coordinator type person to, to help me out. They're not there. It's early. Step out of the room, look down at the end of the hall. There's a lady down there with an apron on putting out breakfast rolls. But she sees me. She comes walking down, introduce herself. Any child. She says, how can I help you? And I'm thinking, I don't think you can. But she's it. I said, well, look, I mean, my mistake, we, 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 we need a completely different AV setup. The room setup is not right. And a couple of other things. I said, and, and she says, okay, I can take care of it. I said, no, you don't understand. I mean, the, this really has to get done. And our clients don't pay for you know, excuses. And I've got to get to my room and, and get cleaned up. She, swear you, she reaches in her apron, pulls out a business card, hands it to me. She says, sir, you really do need to do something with your hair. Why don't you take care of you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll take care of this. I came back about 45 minutes later. It wasn't right. It was perfect. So at the first break, I, I, I sought out my, my new best friend, Annie Chow. I said, Annie, how is it that, that you come to deal with, you know, yo-yos like me and, and this kind of, sir, this, these rooms are my responsibility. I make sure my guests have what they need. I put that in a bottle and sell it. Now, there's a term that's, that's thrown around quite a bit called discretionary effort. I'm from West Virginia originally. That is way too big a word for folks like me. So 
We talk about going the extra mile. I prefer to use the word oomph. To me, oomph is when you, you set the alarm clock an hour early because you can't wait to, to get started. Oomph is when you, you finish your part of a particular task or project and you go help somebody else. Oomph is when you don't wait to be told what to do. You, you get busy. Oomph is deliberate. Oomph is good for customers. It's good for shareholders. It's bad for competitors. So I think oomph is, is, is what we're trying to inspire in the, in the workplace. It's certainly what we saw with, with those 12 companies. Second thing we learned is that the organizations that are, that are really doing the, the best job are getting their folks committed. And I think that makes sense. When you think about every single major achievement in the history of mankind. It's been accompanied by serious commitment. I mean, Chris Columbus might have said, you know, before I sail off the edge of the, the, the known universe, why don't we get some better maps? Alan Shepard might have said, you know what? Why don't we send some monkeys up to the moon before I strap my butt into this thing and take a ride. And to be sure, Martin Luther King Jr. had plenty of reasons not to come to Memphis. Took commitment to do it. So I would invite you to think about your recruiting process. You know, what are we doing? Take a hard look at some of the assumptions that underlie your recruiting processes. Are you recruiting all the time or only when you've got an empty chair? And I know it's tough and when you've got a sour economy and you, know, you may not have any openings, but it, it's tough to keep doing it. But you have to. I'll give you a couple reasons. One, I'm, when I'm not doing this and writing books, I'm out fly fishing somewhere. I have never in 50 years had a fish jump into the boat, <laughs> unaided by effort on my part, okay? You better keep that lure in the water or you're not gonna do too well. Holds true for you too. People need to know why their work matters and where they fit in. We saw it in some work that we did with a company in the Chicago area that manufactures uh, IV tubes and bags you know, for patients. And they had a real problem with, with you know, engagement, turnover. We went in and spent some time with them and I mean, just couldn't put a finger on it. And finally, one of the senior people in our group said, you know what, just, I'm wondering if these folks have any idea how the stuff that they make is used. So we said, let's go find out. We, true story, rented a big yellow school bus put about 40 of them on there, took them down to a local county hospital, walked them through the, the hospital, and you can see their eyes just getting big as dinner plates when they saw patients sitting there getting much needed medication through the stuff that they had made. We've got to get serious about training. My goodness, I mean, star athletes do it, musicians do it, surgeons do it, race car drivers do it. Why can't we get good and serious about training? If we were serious, we wouldn't, I mean, every time you have a bad fiscal quarter, what, are we, what happens to the training budget? <laughs> Screeching halt. Like we're gonna work our way out of an earnings problem by dumbing down the organization. Leaders of choice, organizations of choice, demonstrate in very clear ways that they care about each other. They care about their people. Some big ways, mostly small. If you care about people, you remember why you were issued two ears and only one mouth. You listen, really listen. If you care, you make sure that nobody gets abused or humiliated, ever. And you don't sit still for it. If you care about people, you tell them the truth. 
blowing smoke up somebody's nose is like one of the cruelest things we can do. Leave that for your competitors. It's, it's chicken. It's cowardice. And if you, if you care about somebody when they're having a tough time, you don't send them a text message. You don't send them an email. You show up in person. 